Okay, uh, so in this video I want to discuss a property, uh, an important property of uh, the multinomial distribution. So uh, to do this we'll consider an example basically. So uh, let's consider the example where the baskets in our example are political parties and the tennis balls are people who can vote and they can ascribe their vote to any one of the political parties. And what we want to know is um, what is the, uh, well we want to know what's the uh, probability that certain political parties uh, get a certain number of votes in an election. Okay, so in Britain uh, we have uh, our political parties, our main political parties are Labour and Conservative. So both of them are pretty stable, they both need pretty stable governments. Conservative is probably slightly less stable than Labour. Margaret Thatcher led, you know, she caused civil unrest, but she uh, she wasn't too bad. Uh, they're both, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not nasty parties. They're both sort of, they both lead a nice stable government and keep Britain going. Then we have some other parties. So we have um, Liberal Democrats, uh, so Lib Dem, I'll just put there. Uh, then we have some more niche parties, so we have like the Green Party, which I presume, I don't really know much about politics, but I presume they want to build more wind turbines uh, off our coasts, and um, and then we have some, you know, the nasty ones. Um, I, I'm sure there are more political parties, but the more, uh, the, uh, the only ones that come to mind, because I'm not a big political follower, but I do know some, um, there's UKIP, which stands for UK Independence Party, and then there is the BNP, which stands for British National Party, and these are the nasties. These are, you know, the people who want to cancel all the immigration, um, you know, penalise minority groups, um, wants us to be a friendless, horrible little country, basically. Um, and uh, you then have your voters, your British public here. Uh, so these are the little people over here living in their houses, and they are going to ascribe their vote to one of these parties. And then mo most people will vote for one of these two parties. Some people will vote for Liberal, and then very few people that will, thankfully, will vote for these. Uh, I wouldn't mind if Greens got in. I don't know what the, uh, they probably need a stable government, but I don't want these to get in. Um, and thankfully they don't stand much of a chance of getting in because very few people vote for them. Okay, uh, so here are the British people. Uh, here we go. And they can all ascribe their votes. So uh, how many people are there in Britain? I think it's about 70 million. So we've got 70 million. Here is our N, but we will just generalise that. And we've got these uh, six parties. In fact, let's make it concrete. Let's, let's actually, um, well, actually, we want to try and keep it general, but here's a concrete example. So in this case, K is equal to six. Okay, and uh, there is some probability that you will vote for Labour. So we're going to ascribe Labour. We're going to call Labour Party 1, Conservative Party 2, uh, Lib Dem Party Three, uh, Green Party Four, UKIP Party Five, and BNP Party Six. Okay, uh, so uh, each person ascribes their votes into these uh, parties here, and there's a certain probability that they'll vote for each one. So here is P1, uh, which will be very, you know, it'll be very high. It'll be quite high, so probably about. 30 to 40 percent. Uh, P2 again will be about 30 to 40 percent, maybe slightly higher than Labour, especially if Scotland breaks off from us. Uh, P3 uh, will be Lib Dem, that will be probably maybe 10 percent, uh, 0.1, and then these ones will be very, very small, P4, P5, P6. Okay, uh, so we could write a uh, multinomial distribution for this. So uh, we could um, we could say, you know, we can uh, we can have all possible outcomes in this probability space. So this is all possible outcomes of how you can ascribe these seventy million people into these six baskets. Uh, and uh, that will have, and again, it will be a finite probability space. It's not, a, it's not a continuous probability space. It is finite and discrete. So we can then ascribe, uh, you know, we can ascribe the, uh, in this case, six random variables x one, um, which will ascribe a number between zero and seventy million, seventy million. 70 million uh, to uh, each outcome depending on well or give you basically the number of people who voted Labour so the number of people in basket one so let's just put an example in here so let's say the entire British public put their faith behind Labour so everyone votes for Labour and then no one votes for anything else um, so that's an outcome. It's not particularly likely, but it is an outcome. Uh, and uh, this random variable would describe this outcome, the number 70 million. Okay, so then we could create other random variables, x2, uh, which will again vary from 0 to 70 million. 
and uh, all the way up to xk, which will vary from 0 to 70 million as well. So this is, in, in this case, x6, which will tell you how many people voted for BNP, how many poor, unfortunate, deceived people um, voted for BNP. And uh, you will have all of those. And then you have a joint random variable here, which we'll call the vector big X, uh, which ascribes to each outcome, it ascribes... Uh, a vector, a k vector, in uh, so a vector in R, in this case R6, but we'll keep it general, so Rk. Okay, and uh, you can work out the probability density function for this. Uh, uh, the um, the vector will be distributed multinomially, in this case with uh, k equal to 6, uh, n equal to 70 million, and then a probability vector p, which is uh, this vector up here, p1, oh dear, you can't see, uh, p1, p2, p3, p4, p5, p6, and it will be multinomially distributed, and we'll just quickly write out the probability dense, uh, probability mass function, uh, let's say the probability that x is equal to some ve specific vector, x1, x2, x3, x4, all the way up to uh, um, we'll keep it general, we'll, we'll try and keep it general, xk, let's say, uh, but in this case k was obviously equal to 6, um, and this was going to be equal to, in fact, I'll, we'll, keep, we'll do it specific, let's put that x6 and put x5 in there, so this would be equal to the product, um, i is equal to 1 to 6, uh, of, well, firstly, you need the sum, or you need the, out the front, you have the n factorial. So now we have 70 million factorial, which is some enormous great number. 70 million factorial. And then we want uh, p1, uh, well, pi, sorry, pi to the power of xi divided by xi factorial. Okay. So there we are, there is our probability mass function. So in principle, if you told me what these probabilities were, I could find you the probability of a of a specific outcome of the general election, having, or of the general election, basically. Okay, right. Uh, so um, now, what we want to consider is, what if we decide that this is a bit trivial. Why do we need to? Why do we need to do all six of like this? We could just group these minority ones over here, uh, the ones that very few people vote for. We could just group them into a category called other, and this is often done in <laughs> in polls. You would call them other parties. Uh, so how many people voted for other parties? And the probability of other having happened, the probability that some, an individual member of the British public votes for an other a party is P4 plus P5 plus P6, okay? So what we now want to know is if we consider that as a probability space where we have only four baskets now, how is that uh, distributed? And that's the beauty of it, that if you lump them all together in this way, you get another multinomial distribution, basically. So, uh, again, what we can do is if we have these four baskets now, so one, two, three, and then this super basket, which was this lump of them all, uh, then we have all the possible outcomes, and we then put four random variables, if you like, x1, x2, uh, x3, x4, which are all going to map you onto uh, real numbers, uh, 0, 1, all the way up still to 70 million. Again, these will all be the same. I won't bother drawing them all out. Uh, there we go. Okay, and then uh, what we want is this vector, which is now a four-component vector, x, and uh, it's going to map you onto R4, and we want to know how is it going to be distributed. Well, it's exactly the same problem. You're just now considering four baskets rather than six baskets. So that's the beauty of this, uh, that if you union some of the baskets together, uh, it still forms a multinomial distribution. So X is going to now be multinomially distributed uh, with a parameter, let's say, um, well, parameter 4, if you've got 4 baskets now, and again, you've got n, which is going to be 70 million in this case, 70 million, and the probability vector is now modified, uh, which is, it's now going to be p1, p2, p3, all the way up to, uh, well, it's now p4 plus p5 plus p6. So basically, if you sort of, if you compact all of the uh, the distribution in this way, if you get rid of some of the uh, dimensions of it, before it was a six-dimensional distribution, we've now combined some of the distributions together, we've summed them together, and we're calling that our new random variable. Basically, when you do that, you uh, with the multinomial distribution, you still get another multinomial distribution. That's an important property to bear in mind.